Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, a breakfast cereal shot from gun, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Here's the breakfast that brings cheers from coast to coast. The breakfast that wins praise from so many top action Hollywood movie stars, too. It's swell tasting Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with milk or cream and fruit. These king size, ready to serve premium grains of rice or wheat are shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Tomorrow, sure, enjoy this economical deluxe breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. The Nugget City restaurant was open for business. Enid Carter, the pretty young proprietress, was setting the tables for breakfast with the help of her little brother, Charlie. Oh, so I did. You place them around, will you, Charlie, while I start making the coffee? At that moment, the front door opened and a lean, stoop-shouldered old man entered the restaurant. His deep-set eyes gleamed suspiciously above a beak-like nose, and his mouth seemed twisted into a perpetual sneer. His name was Zebulon Yates. Good morning, Mr. Yates. Have you come for breakfast? I have not. I've come to remind you that the money you owe me is due exactly one week from today. Oh, I, I haven't forgotten, Mr. Yates. As a matter of fact, I was planning to come around and see you about it today. Heh. Planning to ask for an extension on your note, no doubt. I thought as much. Oh, honestly, Mr. Yates, the restaurant is doing fine. If you'll just give me a little more time, I'm sure I can arrange Promises the Promises instead of hard cash. How often I've heard that tune. Well, Miss Carter... I won't waste words. I'll cancel your debt to me completely. And on top of that, I'll make you a payment of $1,000 in cash if you'll give me a written promise that you'll have nothing more to do with Ellen Dennis. Of all the insulting things to say, Mr. Yates, you'd better leave right now before I lose my temper and tell you exactly what I think of you. Don't pull that outrage virtue act on me, young woman. I know perfectly well that you're trying to marry Alan for the money that he'll inherit from me. I... I have nothing more to say to you, Mr. Yates. Please leave the restaurant at once. I have a customer to attend to. Very well. You may be singing a different tune when that note of yours falls due. A short time later that morning, Enid's little brother, Charlie, left the restaurant and went to a cabin located on the edge of Grizzly Creek, just outside of town. The cabin was occupied by a miner named Alex Duncan and his son, Joey. What'd you want to see me about, Charlie? That old tightwad, Mr. Yates, just insulted my sister. That means the secret Avengers have got to go into action. Oh, you bet. We'll fix him good. I'll meet you at the hideout about 2 o'clock. Okay, I'll be there. Goodbye. So long. Meanwhile, Zebulon Yates had gone to his office. The old man was seated at his desk, carefully checking and rechecking his accounts as his nephew, Alan Dennis, entered. Well, good morning, Alan. Didn't think you'd be up for another hour or so yet. I'm up, all right. And what's more, I've just been talking to Sandy McLean. What do you mean? You know what I mean. He told me all about that scene you made over at the restaurant, accusing Enid of wanting to marry me for money. Oh, so you found out, did you? Very well. 
I think it's high time we reached an understanding about that young woman. That young woman, as you call her, is going to be my wife. Nonsense. I may as well tell you that I have no intention of letting you marry Enid Carter. You've got nothing to say about it. Oh, haven't I? Maybe you've forgotten that I'm paying your way through medical school down in the States. Maybe you've also forgotten that you still have another year to go before you complete your training. Don't think I'm not grateful for what you've done. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now that I intend to marry Enid Carter. And I'm telling you that unless you stop seeing that girl, you won't get another penny from me. In that case, there's no use talking. You and I have come to the parting of the ways. As Alan Dennis stormed out of the office, he bumped into two sourdoughs named Scobie and Dolan. Sorry, fellas. Oh, that's all right, Dennis. Looks like you're kind of mad at someone. What's the matter? You've been having an argument with your uncle? You'd better ask him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess the stingy old coot can't even get along with his own nephew. Ah, come on. We may as well go on in and talk to him. Yeah. Scooby and Dolan, huh? What do you two want? Well, it's, it's about that money we owe you, Mr. Yates. What about it? Well, it's due next Thursday. We were wondering if you couldn't give us uh, an extension of time, or say, till next spring. Next spring? What kind of a soft-hearted old fool do you take me for? But look, Mr. Yates, you know doggone well we can't sluice out any more gold till the spring thaw. You'll get no extension from me. Either you pay up by next Thursday, or I take over your claim. Sergeant Preston was passing through Nugget City on his way to the next settlement. His great dog, King, was running ahead of the team as loose lead. As they approached Enid Carter's restaurant, the sergeant shouted, Hawking! Fire! Come on, King, I've got a mighty good appetite worked up for breakfast. Oh, golly, it's Sergeant Preston and King! Hello there, Charlie. Hello, Enid. Sergeant, it's good to see you again. You know Alan Dennis, don't you? Oh, of course. Excuse me, Sergeant. Surely. How's your uncle, Alan? I... You may as well know it, Sergeant. I've had a fight with him. I'm sorry to hear that, Alan. You can patch it up, surely. It's beyond patching up. He tried to dictate to me once too often. What do you mean? He accused Enid of wanting to marry me for money. He told me if I didn't stop seeing her, he'd cut me off without a cent. So I walked out on him. What do you intend to do? I have a little cash to carry me along. I thought I'd head for Dawson and look for a job. I don't suppose you know where I could find one, do you? Well, as a matter of fact, I do know of a mine job you could probably get, but uh, you're a medical student, aren't you? I was. I still had another year to go before I got my degree. Well, Alan, I don't want to butt in, but it seems a crime to cut short your medical education at this point. Maybe so. But I don't intend to let Uncle Zeb come between me and Enid. Well, I don't blame you for standing firm, Alan. But don't you think your uncle might realize his mistake and withdraw his opposition after he cools down a bit? Uncle Zeb? <laughs> Not on your life. No, Sergeant, the only thing for me to do is make a clean break right now. Where is this mine job you mentioned? At the next settlement, about uh, five miles from here. I'll take you there on my sled, but first let me talk to your uncle and see if he won't change his mind. I tell you, it's no use, Sergeant. Besides, if you try to patch things up between us, he'll think I'm ready to knuckle under. Well, I'll make it clear that you're not yielding an inch and that I'm coming to him on my own hook. All right, go ahead. But I warn you, you're wasting your time. Zebulon Yates received the sergeant suspiciously, and the bounty soon realized that Alan hadn't exaggerated his uncle's narrow, uncompromising attitude. Yeah, it's no use trying to change my mind, sergeant. Enid Carter is nothing but a fortune hunter. Zeb, with all due respect, you're being a stubborn fool. Don't you realize you can't dictate to Alan? I can stop him from making a fool of himself, if that's what you mean. You can keep him from a medical career, perhaps, but you can't stop him from marrying Enid. <laughs> we'll see about that. Well, Zeb, if that's your attitude, I guess I might just as well be going. Any message you'd like me to give, Alan? Yes, yeah, Sergeant. Tell him I'll be glad to take him back when he comes to his senses, and not before. Sergeant Preston returned to the restaurant and told Alan what had happened. A short time later, the two men left Nugget City and headed for the next settlement. That afternoon, Enid's little brother Charlie and his friend Joey Duncan held a conference in their secret hideout, a cave in the hills about half a mile from town. Well, oh, gee... What time do you think we should carry out our, our vengeance on Mr. Yates? Oh, we better not try it before midnight. All right. I'll sneak out of the cabin and meet you in front of the restaurant 
at 12 o'clock sharp. You sure you can bring a lantern? Oh, sure, I'm sure. All right. We'll take a vote. All in favor of the plan we've just been talking about, say aye. 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 The secret Avengers have spoken. The meeting is hereby closed. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Everyone loves Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief, doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. Yes, everyone loves delicious, ready-to-serve wheat or rice shot from gun. Take the rich man, for instance. He says... Money can't buy a finer-tasting breakfast cereal. Ask for the poor man. Listen to what he says. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice makes an economical deluxe family breakfast with milk and fruit. And the bigger man says... When it comes to a handout, make mine the cereal shot from guns. That nut-like flavor is terrific. Now take the thief. He's really not one at all. He's simply the fellow who loves to help himself to a second bowlful when nobody's looking. And naturally, Mom doesn't mind that one bit. And listen to what the doctor says. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are nutritious. They furnish restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. They're good for you. And the lawyer... I like the famous Quaker money back with a smile guarantee. It's on every single package. Last but not least, the Indian chief. Mm. Me trade in bow and arrow any day for gun that shoot Quaker puffed rice, Quaker puffed wheat. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Some mighty good reasons why they deserve top spot on your family breakfast table. I mean Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Shot from gun. Now to continue our story. Two sourdoughs named Scobie and Dolan had gone to Caribou Pass to try to borrow money to pay off their debt to old Zebulon Yates. On their way back to Nugget City, they encountered a sudden snowfall. Soon, the two travelers found themselves bucking a howling blizzard. Hey, look. There's a cave over there in the hillside. Maybe we'd better hold up for a while until this blizzard dies down. Yeah, that's a good idea. Gee there! Gee, you are! A few minutes later, the two men were relaxing snugly inside the cave. Dolan had lighted the hurricane lantern taken from the gear on the sled. Scobie remarked. Yeah, this storm won't last long. It'll soon blow over. Too bad that debt we owe to old man Yates won't blow over the same way. And just our luck that Frenchy was too broke to lend us any money. What in thunder are we going to do, Scobie? If Zeb forecloses on our claim, we'll lose everything. If the worst comes to the worst, we'll have to kill the old coot. Yeah, yeah, that's easy to say. How are we going to do it without sticking our necks in a noose? Uh, I don't know. We'll have to figure something out. Oh. Hey, how did that cigar box get in here? Cigar box? Yeah, over there behind that stone. That's funny. Let's see if there's anything in it. Well, I'll be doggone. There's a notebook inside. The Journal of the Secret Avengers. Yeah, let's take a look at that. That's it, huh? <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> it turns out the secret Avengers are those two kids in town. You know, Charlie Carter and Joey Dunn. Oh, sure. <laughs> what you just gave us their hideout. Yeah, I'll read you what it says. First meeting of the secret Avengers, October 10th, 1899. Charlie Carter was elected chief of the Avengers. Before long, the storm had abated enough for the two men to reach town. The following morning, Scobie and Dolan went to Enid Carter's restaurant for breakfast. To their surprise, they found a small crowd gathered around the doorway. As they pushed their way inside, they saw Zebulon Yates, angry and red-faced, confronting Enid Carter. Where's that young hoodlum brother of yours? I told you I hadn't seen him all morning. You mark my words. That brother of yours is headed for the gallows. What? 
I've known all along that he was a criminal type. Hey, Sandy, what's but eating the old coot? Didn't you go by his office this morning? No, what's wrong? Charlie Carter and that pal of his, Joey Duncan, put up a big snowman in front of Zeb's office. <laughs> it's the spitting image of Zeb. Yeah. Funniest... Yeah. Funniest thing you ever saw. On top of that, the kids hung a sign on the snowman calling Zeb the meanest old galoot in town. <laughs> boy, oh boy, Zeb sure is mad. <laughs> he already had it in for Enid Carter. Yeah, how come? Because his nephew aims to marry the girl. Zeb tried to break things up between them, but young Dennis wouldn't knuckle under, so they had a big bust up. Uh, hey, Dolan, what's the matter? Hey, come on, I, I got an idea. <laughs> Outside in the street, Scobie spoke to Dolan. You know where them two kids are hiding now? Where? In that cave in the hillside where we found that notebook. Yeah, I bet you're right. But what's that got to do with us? Now listen, we've been trying to figure out a way to get rid of Zeb, ain't we? Yeah? Well, I just got an idea how we can do it. And we'll go to that cave right now. And here's what we'll do. Scobie had guessed right. Charlie and Joey were hiding in their secret cave waiting for Zeb Yates' wrath to cool down before showing their faces in town. Oh, gee, you suppose we went too far this time? I don't know, but I'll bet Mr. Yates is really mad. Hey, what's that? Something like a dog team. Golly, maybe someone's found our hideout. I hear him coming. Look, two men with handkerchiefs over their faces. And one of them's carrying some rope. Uh, don't get scared, Sally. We're not going to hurt you. Well, what are you going to do? We're going to tie you up so you can't get away. You mean you're going to leave us here forever? <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. We'll come back sometime tonight and let you go. Hey, come on, get busy with that rope. All day long, Enid Carter waited for her brother to come home. Darkness was falling and still Charlie hadn't shown up. Enid was desperately worried. Finally, she went to see Joey's father. Oh, it's you, Miss Carter. Yes, it, has Joey come home yet? No, he hasn't. And I can't find hiding a hair of him. What about Charlie? He hasn't come home either. I'm terribly worried. I think it's about time we got some search parties out after those two kids. Oh, yes, let's do that. I'm sure something must have happened to them. Uh, wait a second till I get my parka. Then we go back to town and round up some men to help us. Search parties were hastily formed. But after combing the surrounding countryside, they failed to find any trace of the missing boys. A heavy snowfall that afternoon had blotted out any hope of discovering the boys' tracks. Weary and discouraged, the searchers finally gathered in the streets of town and discussed the situation by the light of pine players. What in tarnation could have happened to those kids? Yeah, maybe they're hiding out somewhere. Afraid to come home on account of that trick they played on old Zeb Yates. Well, I've got a different idea. What do you mean? Sandy, you heard the way Zeb was threatening the kids in the restaurant this morning? Yeah. How do we know he's not responsible for their disappearance? Oh, well, I thunder that's an idea. You ask me, that old cuss is mean enough to do anything. That's yeah. a fact. Right. Personally, I've always thought Zeb was a little crazy. What's more, he was nursing a grudge against Enid Carter. Maybe he figured to get even with her by doing away with her kid brother. Now, come on. I vote we go over to Carter's place right now and see what she thinks. Oh, God. Oh, God. As the crowd surged down the street, it gradually collected more members. And with every step taken, the conviction grew stronger that old Zeb Yates had indeed done away with the two boys. But Enid Carter refused to fall in with the spirit of the mob. Why should you stick up for the old buzzer? Because I tell you he's innocent. Oh, he's mean and stingy, I'll grant you that. But that doesn't mean he'd harm two small children. Oh, yeah. Maybe and maybe not. Now, come on, let's not waste any more time. Let's go on out to Zeb's cabin. Yeah. No, we know how me. to deal with poor cats like him. Oh. Terrified, Enid watched the mob surge away. If they get their hands on Mr. Yates, they'll lynch him for sure. If only Sergeant Preston were here. I just got to reach him and tell him what's happening. Several dog sleds have been left standing in the street with their teams still in harness as their owners drifted away with the mob. Enid selected one of the sleds and cracked the whip over the sprawling, quarrelsome huskies. Line! Line the team! Now, must you huskies, must! In the next settlement, five miles from Nugget City, Sergeant Preston and Alan Dennis were preparing to turn in for the night. The two men were occupying a small shack. Well, Alan, 
How'd you like your first day as a mine hand? <laughs> it's a little harder on the muscles than studying medicine. <laughs> but I guess I'll get used to it. Oh, I'll see who it is. Enid Carter. Enid. Sergeant, you've got to come back to Nugget City right away. What's wrong? My brother Charlie and his friend Joey Duncan have disappeared. What? The people all think Mr. Yates is responsible. I'm afraid they're going to lynch him. Come on, Ellen, get your fargo. We've got to hurry. Right. Half an hour later, the sergeant and his two companions arrived in front of Enid's restaurant. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Why are we stopping here, sergeant? I want to put King on Charlie's trail. Enid, can you give me something Charlie's worn recently? Oh, yes. There's a cap of his hanging on the hook just inside the door. I'll get it right away. You think King can do it, sergeant? I'm sure he can. Here you are, sergeant. Good. Here, King. Fine, boy. Fine. That's the scent, fella. All right, Alan. You need to go with King. Follow wherever he leads. Right, sir. In the meantime, I'll try to head off that mob. Come on, Enid. All right, you huskies. Push! Push on! As Sergeant Preston raced his team toward Zeb Yates' cabin, he feared that the lynch mob might already have taken the old man's life. But when he drew in sight of the cabin, he saw that Zeb was still alive. The guttering light of a dozen pine flares showed the old moneylender standing bareheaded and shivering in the clutches of the mob. Hello, Husky. Hello. All right, take your hands off that man. What's going on here? Zeb Yates has done away with young Charlie Carter and Joey Duncan. And now he's going to get what's coming to him. It's a lie, Sergeant. I haven't seen either one of those kids all day. We'll go into that later. Right now, I'm taking you into my custody. There's no need to waste money on a trial. We got a trio picked out for the old buzzer. Since when have you taken to enforcing the law, Scooby? Just take a look at this mitt. What about it? It's got Charlie Carter's name inside it. And we found it right in front of Zeb's cabin. Oh, That's yeah, right. Yeah. We'd have had the old skin flint strung up long ago if he hadn't barricaded himself inside the cabin. That's yeah. Right. And we're still going to string him up. This gun says you're not stringing up anybody. As long as there's a mounted policeman in this territory... No one takes the law into their own hands. Meanwhile, King was eagerly pursuing the scent of the lost boy. Alan and Enid followed close behind the great lead dog, with Alan handling the team. Finally, King halted at what appeared to be a blank hillside and began to scratch and dig at the thick, snow-covered underbrush. Holy smoke, this underbrush scrapes right away. Alan, what's wrong? There must be a cave or a hole or something behind this stuff. Someone's just tried to cover it up. Will I shove these boulders out of the way? <laughs> a few moments later, Alan and Enid heard muffled sounds issuing from inside the hole. Alan, there's someone in there. Will I shove this boulder a little farther out of the way? There. Now hand me that lantern again and we'll see what's inside. Right. It's the boys. They're all tied up and gagged. The important thing is that they're safe. Here, we'll soon have them free. Meanwhile, back at Zeb Yates' cabin, the situation was growing more and more dangerous as Scoby and Dolan egged on the mob. I say we wasted enough time, John, with this money. It's time we started acting. Preston, either you turn Zeb over to us or take the consequences. I'm warning you, Scoby, don't come any closer. You wouldn't dare fire that gun at honest citizens. Come on, men, let's take them. As the mob closed in, Sergeant Preston played his last card. He fired his gun over the heads of those nearest him. Come on, he's just firing over our heads. Get back, Dolan! The sergeant threw down his gun and began lashing out with his fists. But he knew the struggle couldn't last long. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, a great dog charged into the mob. It's clear. Hey, let me out of here. That dog ain't fooling. Oh, oh, there you are, Oh, oh. Wait, wait, stop it. The boys are safe. It's young Dennis. And the boys are with him. Joey, are you all right? Oh, oh golly, it's good to see you. They're both all right. My uncle had nothing to do with their disappearance. Well, I told him so. I told him I was innocent. Well, where in thunder were the kids all this time? In a cave in the hillside. Two men tied them up and left them there. Oh, Who were the two men? They had handkerchiefs over their faces, but the boys can give you a pretty good description. How about it, Johnny? Well, one was a big tall man with a caribou parka. The parka had a patch on the left side. Just like that one right there. Hey, what are you pointing at me for? Yeah, that's his voice, too. I'm sure of it. Looks like he's got you tagged, Scooby. What about the other man, Charlie? Well, he was shorter and heavier, and he had a black bearskin parka. That's Dolan by thunder. Why, those dirty pole cats. 
Scobie and Tolan are the ones who gave us the idea of lynching us. Yeah. It was Scobie who claimed he found that mitten near Zeb's cabin. Right. Apparently, it was a cold-blooded scheme to get rid of Zeb. And I'll bet I know why. To get out of paying back the money that they owe. Sure, Mr. Reed. Boys, looks like we've been trying to string up the wrong man. Now, oh, wait a minute. We can explain. Explain no, we nothing. Let's give them the same treatment they tried to give Zeb. No, hold no, it. No. Hold it, all of you. You just came close to making one tragic mistake. Haven't you learned yet that mobs aren't fitted to administer justice? Uh, Sergeant, I guess maybe you got something there. As for you two, Scobie and Dolan, you're both under arrest in the name of the Queen. The charge is attempted murder. Later, in Zeb's cabin, with the two crooks handcuffed together, Zeb Yates learned how Enid had saved his life. Oh, I've been an old fool. Enid... Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Oh, of course I can. Well, in that case, maybe you'll even invite me to your wedding after Alan gets through medical school. Oh, you hear that, Alan? Oh, Charlie. Oh, well. Charlie, I'd like to tell you something. What's that, Sergeant? If the Secret Avengers hadn't put up that snowman in front of Zeb's store... I know, Sergeant, but I guess we shouldn't have done it. You see, Charlie, the big trouble with secret societies that try to take things into their own hands is that they can lead to lynch mobs. Will you promise me to steer clear of that sort of thing from now on? I sure will, Sergeant Preston. All right. Let's shake on that, Charlie. The secret Avengers are hereby dissolved, and this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, ibbity, bibbity. Oh, why bother with that? When you can't decide which you want to get, Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, just do this. Don't miss out on either of these delicious, ready to serve breakfast cereals. Keep a supply of both kinds on hand. Eat Quaker puffed wheat one time, Quaker puffed rice the next. Remember, wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Look for the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Get the original, crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now the Quaker Oats Company reminds all parents listening to this program that poor school conditions handicap our children and weaken our nation. Do your part to avoid this by joining and working with local civic groups and school boards actively seeking to improve educational facilities. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the old timer. King and I were looking for a dog, that old friend of ours. His trail led us to a ghost town high in the hills. And when we reached there, we not only found old timer, but a gang of bandits who were ready to commit murder for gold. There was an explosion, a landslide, a fire. It was the kind of adventure that happens once in a lifetime. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant... Of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same.
This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.